London, it's politically incorrect with Phil Maher. Phil's guest tonight, the awful truth, Michael Maher. Actor, Jeremy Northam. Comedian, Michael Maher. And former member of Parliament, Edwina Curry. And now, the star of politically incorrect, Phil Maher. Of you, our American friends on this side of the aisle, our British friends over here, neither one cares. Anyway, <laughs> it's wonderful to be here in London. This is our fourth day. Uh, I'm acting just like a tourist. I'm not ashamed to admit it. I love it. I get excited like every other American over here, especially when I spot a royal. That's very exciting. And not just because I know they have drugs. I'm saying <laughs> they... Hey, I know you think we're stupid. I know, no, I, it's, they're very polite here, but I know the British people think uh, we're stupid, and there was evidence in the paper this week that they may be right. Um, <laughs> did you hear this? The United States Post Office has printed a hundred million stamps of the Grand Canyon. Even you British people know the Grand Canyon, right? Okay, well, it, on the stamp it says, Grand Canyon, Colorado. <laughs> yes, I'm not kidding about it. The problem is it's in Arizona, you see? <laughs> And I say, if you don't know what state the Grand Canyon is, you should not be delivering the mail. <laughs> um, you should be making maps for NATO. That's what I was trying to Thank you. Well, speaking of NATO, our Congress in America has voted $15 billion to support this war in uh, Kosovo. The Americans always do. They added what they call pork. Do you have pork here? That's when they add something to a bill that makes no sense. I'm not kidding. On the Kosovo bill, they added money for research on reindeer. <laughs> Just in case Milosevic uh, enters into a strategic alliance with Santa. That's... <laughs> Um, now, Hillary Clinton was there last weekend, and she has now spoken out about her experiences. She was in Macedonia with the refugees, and she said she heard harrowing stories about families torn apart and homes destroyed. And her first question was, Monica was here? <laughs> 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 no, they're owing it that is if it's controversial at this point. <laughs> well, finally, there's a new study out that says breast implants. Do you have those here? Do you have, have they come to Great Britain? Uh, very popular in the States. Listen to this. Breast implants, they say in this new study, reduce perhaps the, the uh, onset of breast cancer. Not for any chemical or biological reason. It's just that women who have them are constantly having their breasts examined. <laughs> so, <laughs> that would... <laughs> okay, let's start our show. Thank you so much for... To research the reaction to that. All right, his new show on BBC Two is called Mark Lamar, Leaving the 20th Century, The Toast of Swindon, Mark Lamar. <laughs> How are you? Thank you for coming. All right, he's a novelist and former member of Parliament. Her new book is The Ambassador, Edwina Curry. Yes. Hey. How are you? Nice to see you. He has two new movies. One is The Winslow Boy. Another is An Ideal Husband, now showing in Britain and coming to America soon. Jeremy Northam. <laughs> hey, how are you? Thank you for coming. And his troublemaking new series, The Awful Truth, is on Bravo in America now, and its new season starts on Britain's Channel 4 right here on June 1st. Michael Moore. <laughs> Michael, welcome to London. 
Okay. Um, you are the great tribune of the jobless in America. Is that not true? You stand up for the people who've been thrown out of work and <clears throat> Americans that's what I know this about Michael Moore. Form. Yes. <laughs> I came Why he wears the baseball cap. <laughs> um, now that's an issue here in uh, in Europe where uh, in America we've we've pretty much done away with welfare. That was a big controversy. Clinton finally did it. The Republicans tried. Well, I think the same thing is happening here maybe, but well, I don't know. Uh, today I saw in the paper that said there were new penalties for the work shy. I love that term, work shy. Mm. <laughs> they like can't a, like even, a horse they're even, bridling at a jump. Yeah, they can't even call them lazy. They have to say work shy. <laughs> and from what I read, Europe is going in the opposite direction of America, where they're putting no stigma on if you do not work. At, it's well, almost the other way around. I, I was born and grew up in the city of uh, Liverpool. Ah. Uh, which has one of the highest unemployment rates in Europe. And there, the trick is uh, to earn a living without having to give up your Social Security or your, or your other benefits. <laughs> it's quite a skill, I may why, tell why you. Why do you think there should be a stigma? People generally want to, to work. People want to earn a living wage. So uh, why should they be sort of downgraded if they're not able to do that? You sh there shouldn't be a stigma. You should because if there's no stigma, people. then there is no incentive to get back to work. But, but uh, there is. There's like money. I Which think is it's always an incentive. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, because they pay them benefits. You don't have but to work. Listen, I, I was I was unemployed, unemployed for five years, and it was my choice. Um, unemployed really, for five years? Did yeah. you get benefits? Yeah, I got benefits. Well, see, but in America, you wouldn't anymore. No, he was so working. I, I, no, but, but, but he was working that time. You, you were working. I was you were learning. Occasionally, yeah. I was, I was I was but the point is, the money you get on the day is something like, when I was on the day, it was something like it would have been the equivalent of $25 a week which isn't like a really good living wage. It's not something that you can say to people, there you go, you're scrounging off the state with your $25, you can go and buy like two CDs. See, I love the... Yes. I, I, it's I it's love, not a living wage. I love, I love the implication that Wiener comes up with, which, is, which has been around for like 20 years, is that the, the Social Security was being defrauded and it was being exploited. It is and being defrauded. Yes, it might well Tony be. Tony Blair says so. Tony Blair says so. But for, 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 for 20 years... <laughs> That people have been, you know, we're willing to, you know, we're able to go to the other side of the world and uh, uh, reclaim the fault. But unable to have Jeremy, the political I, I, will to I, I, I was, uh, solve this I was a Tory MP for 14 years. Don't show people. off about that. Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> I've had people come to me. I've had people come to me and start working in my office. And afterwards, we've discovered they're still claiming Social Security. Mark is quite right. It is the money aspect. But the trick is to be working. I'm claiming you social security. Yeah, but it's so hard to claim the dole and, and, and to work. It's so hard to actually go through the regulations to claim but the dole. And if the, all these reforms in the in regulations are being put in place properly, done, then people will have been, but, but people people have been defrauding the system. But Americans don't have that problem. Well, well, they don't have that problem. 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 Well, they don't have much. I understand. But there are many countries well, now that ha in Europe that have double digit uh, unemployment, which is not really going down even when the Ten people unemployed. <laughs> the economy <laughs> gets better. Like much. <laughs> it must be higher than that, but I'd look again at the statistics. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Yeah, but no, I don't. Unfortunately, we don't speak the same you're language. You're Wait a second. Divided. In France. In France, the unemployed this year went on strike. I don't know how you even do that. <laughs> I'm not kidding. No. That's how ingrained no, that idea is that you don't have to... The unemployed went on we strike. No job. Wait a second. <laughs> asking for an increase in benefits and a two-week vacation. Yeah, but you can't use the French for example. A two-week vacation. You can't use the French What's for example at all. Yeah, what do you use the, the French are the worst example Farrell, of everything. Well, look at that. It's a different problem. You see, what, what is, what is, they, you see the, I'm, just, I'm sorry to get party political, but the Tories did this fantastic trick, starting off with saying that, you know, uh, there's so much fraud going on in the social security system. There and is. Then it, the implication is that anyone who signs on is defrauding the system, and I think no. that is completely But the people wrong. who defraud the system, no, I don't take it away from the people who really Can deserve I that here? Yes, this, please. This, uh, that's a minority of people in any country that want to defraud the system exactly. or just are lazy dead. How do you know? How do you know? Vast, because in he was one of these people, I was one of these people, you know, hundreds of place. others. I made Roger me while I was on unemployment, making $98 a week. I mean, that, that's... By the way, I'm... So he's a welfare bum, I'm a welfare bum, and we can point out a lot of other people who, who because they had a cushion and a safety net, 
when times were bad for them, were able to, to recover yeah, but, but and then end up making a lot of money, paying a lot okay. of taxes, much okay. more than we ever got in unemployment. Those are the objects. Those are the objects. Okay. So, but just the to label these people like this was really... And sure. Listen, this country yeah. was run by a very mean-spirited woman named Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> And, and what she did was she came and inhabited the body of a fairly she decent actor who was our president. She did yeah, yeah. And he became like her. And, and now we, you know... So what you've got to ask is whether, whether people who are not earning a great deal of money, not much more than that, uh, that sort of figure, should be paying more tax so that someone like Mark could... I'm could glad that people are for him to do nothing. Because, first of all, I, I don't want somebody... Do yeah, but wait a minute. Yeah, well, I don't want somebody, I don't somebody, I don't want somebody like that him working next to me if he doesn't want to be working. Why not? It's a, well, Why in America, not? Well, in America, we call it going paying postal. paying tax to keep you yeah. going. Yeah. Okay, I'd rather stay home. I have to take home. a break. We'll come back in just a minute. Okay, um, we were talking about socialists generosity and uh, <laughs> I've been imploring uh, Britain mostly all week to act less like Americans but in this way I think America is leading the way because it's getting people off the door. Yes. But Bill, do you understand the European concept of, of the safety net? We have that concept too. Yeah. We have a safety yeah, no, net well, I'm not became sure. a much bigger net. Yeah, but what, what you get right through Europe and you get it particularly in this country, France and Germany is the idea that anybody at any time might be unemployed and they'd like to have the system there when, it, when they do need it or disabled or whatever and therefore people are willing to pay taxes it's actually amazing every time we have recommended cutting taxes in this country people vote for well things to be roughly the way you realize yeah, that no, no one can that, recommend that regardless whether you, whether you stub your toe or need a brain tumor removed in a hundred thousand dollar operation it's completely free here no matter what your problem is yeah, right. you, have to wait. Yeah, you have to wait a year you don't have to wait that long here that's, well, that's part of the the republic you do have to you know, wait now because not last night i think it was last night you made some sweeping statement about uh what a fantastic woman margaret thatcher was now she'd saved yeah. britain well in fact uh, personally i think she's a bucket of <laughs> but that's just me that i can't prove that but apart from that, the reason you have to wait is because while she was in power, she cut back the whole health service. She smashed no, the unions. She did not. She smashed the unions, yes, but, but she didn't cut the health service. No, we no, had no, to no, spend you're, you're a lot more on health service. You, you were looking her up. Well, what? Oh, what? <laughs> and you were making a living out of her. Huh? You were making... You were, you, were making, you were making a wonderful living out of her, just producing, uh, you know, rather negative phrases about her. That's how you made your living out of her. What are you going to do now? I, now I you've got Mrs. Blair in. What do you mean I've made a living out of Another Tory lie. <laughs> I've never, never mentioned her before to anyone on any TV. Are you sure you know who she is? Yes. No, we, put, we had to put a lot more money into the health service, but partly because we have got one of the most aged societies in the world. We have more old people than most countries and as a result yeah, you know why you do? That's because why of your, no, because of your health system. And that's why the, people are prepared to spend. People, people Cause, live cause long. Because we're all going to be old one day. Is this how it was in the 80s? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it was. It was. Yeah. It was like this all the time. <laughs> Talking loud and saying nothing. The reason yeah. why you have to... <laughs> the, reason, the reason why you have such an elderly population here is because their life expectancy is longer than in the U.S. They have a, a better infant, more infant mortality rate than we do. Uh, that's because of their health care system. That's, that's because everyone is treated and treated America for free. That's because America causes cancer. <laughs> <laughs> because it's polluted, because of the... Oh, have you been to this, around what, this country? What this we is one eat. of the most polluted countries on earth. Mm. You're not going to get oh, out of this London is, alive. The fish are changing it's sex really... in our rivers. That's the good yeah. one. Yes, that's true. The this fish, is the the fish are changing <laughs> sex in the rivers. Wow, just like members of parliament. Yeah. Okay, we'll be right back, and we will be right back. Um, you know, throughout history, uh, a lot of different nations have had a crack at really running the world. I mean, if you were born in a certain era, you were, in, you were Egyptian, you were the king of the world. If you were in China, a certain era, uh, the Muslims during the Middle Ages, Great Britain, the sun never set there for a while, and it did. And, you know, not to, <laughs> not, not to rub it in, but it is the American era now. Uh, I have two questions. One, how long do you think the American era will last? And do you, in your heart of hearts, you British people, do you really miss being 
king of the world. <laughs> no. We're all too young to remember. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't remember it. No, we're all too young to remember. That was, that was presumably it. before the, so, before the Second World War. You don't miss it. You mean, yeah, no, of course it does. How can we miss like we'd never seen or heard about? We, yeah, we, we didn't have that system. They've only known either. misery and despair their whole <laughs> lives. <laughs> have you never seen Olivon? <laughs> but certainly you must be aware that at a certain point in your parents' life, anyway, that Britain was the country that sort of... No, but you've got to remember where we are now. I mean, for us, India does not mean, that, you know, the Suez Canal and, and the Raj and all that kind of thing. India means Indian restaurants. It means having a curry on a Saturday night. The commonest uh, meal is in thank God, God for Indian restaurants. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, means, it means great guys like um, all the Pakistani taxi drivers in Birmingham. It means you know, you know, Pakistan people. and India, they're two different countries. Yeah, they are. <laughs> and Bangladesh. How could India mean Pakistan? And Bangladesh. It does not mean you are, it's you are fishing a barrel tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think about this? India means Pakistan. But there are some countries that, let's be honest, were better. Uh, seemed like they were better off when England was around to give them a, a swift kick in the pants. That's a very snobbish thing to say. Well, it may be snobbish, but it may also be true. I don't think so. Really? Do you think the average Somalian was better off? We didn't rule Somalia. Well, but bad example. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but you ruled a lot of places in third world countries that are now a mess, that weren't a mess when you were around. And the average person had it better. You don't think that's true? I think America was probably better when we ruled it. <laughs> oh, no. Well, all that's happened is that uh, uh, the I mean, system of government has right. been replaced by a system of economics. And, you know, countries like India are run by huge international economic forces rather than a particular country. That's all that's different. Well, but if it's such a great country, how come they're all here? They are. <laughs> yeah, there's an awful lot more. India, the, uh, when, we, when we governed India, they were recipients of money from the, from the World Bank and international organizations. Now they're donors to these countries. India is one of the biggest industrial nations in I think the world. What, I think what Jeremy you said know, is, is that. correct, that, that it's not about America running the world or Britain. It's about these large multinational corporations who no longer see themselves as American or British or Chinese or whatever. It, they see themselves as global companies and they control the economies. And, and they are pretty much setting the agenda. And, and that's the one world that, that we're becoming. That's the connecting force. You are so obsessed with companies. Well, well it's, it's right. true. I but mean, there are still... We should be, really. Yeah, He's got yeah that's, somebody that's, better be. But that, that's uh, a recurrent theme in the European Union. That's why so much of the legislation is pan-European. Because otherwise you can get com uh, companies hopping their headquarters from one country to the next, trying to trade off one bit but against the other. But this country really doesn't want to join Europe, does it? I mean, this country thinks of itself... We are out of date. We joined it over 25 years ago. Oh, come on. You are not part of the Euro. I know that. Yeah, but that's something different. Yeah, that's what do you mean that's something different? Well, well that's a different... That's, oh, I know you're part of... Coming. They want to they they come to the party. They just don't want to pay the fee. No. Right. No, no, no. <laughs> That's right. Same thing with... No, no, no. There's, there's, an, there's an argument on both right and left about how much uh, um, individual power will be handed over to a government of, with, which the members of this population will have little sort of um, contact. Well, that's, I don't think it's that's just that. I think British people are afraid of losing their identity. Yes. Most British people uh, don't want to be part of Europe. Not that's, that's nothing to do with right. the financial situation. That's they just think, oh, we, we don't want to be right. I know no. you think we're right. right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know you think we're stupid, but I knew that, and he, would, he you know. You tend, you tend Thanks, find, bro, for backing me but up. But it's to do with independence. You tend to find exactly the same people. Wouldn't mind the least of the United Kingdom was the 51st state of the United States of America. They mm. have this kind of hang up about, about the language. But the fact is that America's time is coming to an end already. What? The 15 countries in the European Union already combined have a population as big as the United States and Japan put together. Mm. And the EU's economy is 20% larger than America's. You don't know it yet, mm. but you're on yeah. the way well, out already. Don't watch out. Watch out. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. The, 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 take a break. The we'll be right back. Okay. and would like free tickets to Politically Incorrect, call 323-575-4321. Okay, um, I'll try not to make any more factual errors here, but, uh, and, and, you know, the British people are wonderfully polite, but let me ask you, I've been trying to get this answer out of people all week, and it's very hard out of British people to get, you know, say anything critical, but 
You do think we're stupider, don't you? And you may be right. <laughs> no. You don't? I don't think it's so much that. I think it's that Americans think that we're all incredibly cultured. I think Americans have an inferiority yeah, complex. Yeah, I think Americans you're right. The image of not. the British is that we're all some sort yes. of 17th century butler that wakes up yeah. and quotes Shakespeare in the morning. <laughs> yeah. and look at but, 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 they're hearing these people. Some of them are very chimp-like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, though, because uh, I've been over here with my show, they are smarter uh, than we are. And what's so odd about that is is that there hasn't been an invention or anything yeah. come out it's of this country in 50 years. It's I mean, it's 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 okay, I have to break before we get into the rest of it. Tomorrow we're going to have Emma Sam's, Jonathan Ross, Jarvis Crocker, and Graham Norton.